Shabbat Shalom, everybody. It was the meeting December 2015 in a somewhat cold San Diego suburb in Encinitas, California. Rachel and I, we had the last small audience with Abraham Foxman, the previous director of the Anti-Defamation League. There were about 15 of us in this living room. He asked us one question. What keeps us up at night? And he let us think about this. This was a setup for him. And to be honest, what keeps me up at night, I was recently married, think about that. Finances, a new position, a year in, all the stuff of the human realities. But for Abe Foxman, this incredible leader of the great Anti-Defamation League during his tenure, this is what kept him up at night. Iran becoming closer to obtaining a nuclear weapon. The threat against our indigenous homeland, the state of Israel. And the third, the rising hate against Jews on college campuses. Foxman, like a prophet from the Northern Kingdom, predicted his fears. We can say that his tenure during at the helm of the ADL truly embodied the early 20th century creation of its genesis. The ADL, a Jewish nonprofit, a special order of B'nai B'rith, a special order to secure the Jewish people, advocate for the state Yisrael, and fighting against anti-Semitism. One of the things that we celebrate in Judaism is the idea of critical thinking. It's the shades of gray, it's the nuances, it's examination of all sides. We're not supposed to be a binary religion. And so before I make my next thought and statements, I want this congregation to know and those who are watching it, I put a lot of critical examination and nuance into what I'm about to say. For many of us, the ADL is the go-to for combating Jewish hate and all forms of celibate bigotry. For a 120-year organization, their efforts, a lot of them, should be celebrated, especially their work interfacing with law enforcement, local and the FBI, and fighting against different forms of extremism. But there is certain realization that we need to come to. That the post Foxman tenure is different. New leaders come, and I'm not the only one who shares this assessment. In a way, this is the third rail of Jewish life. Don't touch it, the ADL. But to those who know me, I can't hold back. Based on their literature, their press releases, and other forms of communication, it appears that they are more political, siding with a certain political ideology, and which I believe, and many Jews believe, harming their mission as they once started in the early 20th century. Setting new policies and staff hires that are deeply troubling and are worthy of mentioning even on Shabbat. Recently, they hired someone named Tima Smith, the director of Jewish Outreach. And here are some of her quotes in the past. Jews have to be okay with Palestinians while they turn to terrorism. In 2014, she wrote an article entitled, There Are No Good Guys, in the Gaza-Israel conflict. She also wrote, Hamas and the Palestinians as a whole have a real and legitimate grievances against Israel. She also retweeted, repent for Gaza's dead. Again, this is the person who is now the director 
of Jewish outreach. She has retracted. She has apologized. And I think in the spirit of Judaism, we honor a genuine form of an apology. But this second chance is not leading this critical division. The ADL missed the mark five years ago, suggesting that Ilhan Omar, then an ardent Jew hater, was inspiring. A few years ago, the ADL came out in defense of Human Rights Watch and Amnesty International. From the ADL, we oppose broadly applying an anti-Semitic label to these human rights organizations. Doing so is neither accurate nor helpful to fight against anti-Semitism. Rather, this move would politicize the fight against anti-Semitism. The Human Rights Watch, which has led for a couple decades, is led by someone named Ken Roth, who is an open Jew hater and is called Israel an apartheid state. And I'm sure that you've heard recently the new report from Amnesty International, another Jew-hating NGO organization. And here is what they put in their report that just came out. And there's 280 pages. Hamas was mentioned 26 times. Rocket was mentioned six times. Fatah was mentioned four times. Tunnel, one. Islamic Jihad, zero. Suicide bomb, bombing or bomber, zero. Apartheid, 686. Full disclosure, the ADL condemned this report, but Amnesty International was the same Amnesty International a few years ago when it came to its defense. And here lies our main problem. Around the summer of 2020, the ADL changed the definition of racism. The marginalization and or oppression of people of color based on socially constructed racial hierarchy that privileges white people. This is not the definition of racism. It's a form of a position statement catering towards a new form of intersectional ideology that I spoke about two weeks ago. It's not only wrong, and this is not how we create a just world. And this is why we have the whoopee problem. For those who watch The View, this is daytime television. This is what's everything wrong in our society, The View. She said, Whoopi Goldberg, the Holocaust isn't about race. Because of radical thinking, hyper-tribalism, and what I spoke about again two weeks ago, this idea that intersectional theory rejects Jews as an oppressed class. Because if Jews are successful and they deem success all forms, but above all, the creation of the State of Israel in 1988, 1948, this success had to come at the expense of oppressing someone else. And therefore, this is why, for Whoopi, the Holocaust isn't about race. By the ADL definition, as scholars have suggested, this was the on-ramp for her to suggest this. And this is why we have something new, Holocaust revisionism. More people won't learn about the truth of the Holocaust. We're losing survivors. And Whoopi, in front of a live audience, totally revised the story of Jewish life, our pain, our suffering, between 1933 and 1945. For 2,000 years, for the most part, Jews were separated based on their religious identity. This is what Augustine refers to, label them as Jews. And for those who've ever been to Europe or traveled throughout what would be Speyer or Worms, 
you would see pictures of Jews with a little circular donut to identify the Jews. But if they converted to Christianity, they were accepted. But it wasn't until the 19th century, someone named Wilhelm Marr, who changed the story for the Jewish people. He said that Jews are not religiously different, but Jews are an inferior race based on their blood. This led to the establishment of the Nuremberg Laws, and this is why if you were a quarter Jew, your story was to the gas chambers for the Nazis. The ADL did condemn this statement by pointing this out. Then they rewrote the definition of racism because of this crisis. They accepted Whoopi's apology, believing that she has always stood for Jews. But again, I can't say this. In the early 90s, she decided to write a cookbook. And one recipe she called the Jewish American Princess Fried Chicken. A couple years ago, when Israel was facing an onslaught of Palestinian terrorism, she supported the Palestinians. And above all, a new terminology of cultural appropriation, she culturally appropriated a Jewish last name for her own benefit. She is not Jewish. So what's next? What do we do now? In the spirit of Jewish nuance, in the spirit of examination, and even teshuva, I firmly believe that the ADL needs to have a reset, a reevaluation to ensure it represents the special order of B'nai B'rith. Since Foxman's retirement, the literature, some of the positions, are not in the core belief system of the Jewish people. A special order of B'nai B'rith needs to represent all Jews from all movements. The past few weeks since Texas, just days after the world commemorated International Holocaust Remembrance Day, Nazi swastikas were painted on a Union station in DC Multiple synagogues and Jewish-owned businesses in Chicago were also graffitied with Nazi symbols. There was a neo-Nazi rally in Orlando. This week's global anti-Semitism report highlighted 52 media reports of Jew hatred attacks, 34% from the far right, 20% from the far left, 16% from radical Islam, and 30% from unviable in nature. A third of Canadian students don't understand the Holocaust or question the Holocaust. A quarter of Australians are unaware of the Holocaust. And nearly one in three young Germans, and this is somewhat new, hold Jew hatred beliefs because Germany was supposed to be this new melting pot country, but now the tides are changing for the bad again. More than 90% of American Jews are concerned about Jew hatred increased 75% in France, and 2021 has been the most anti-Semitic year so far the past decade, this past month. We desperately need an ADL like the mold of Foxman to help us in this fight. I'm not for cancel culture. I'm not calling for Greenblatt's resignation. I would love to invite him here to have discourse, to debate. We can be honest and tell them that the ADL has done great things, but for now, a lot of what they do is broken. They are overly ideological, they're partisan, trying to fit in a mold of a woke coastal philosophy that is simply angering more Jews and not protecting us. In light of my sermon two weeks ago, some members of this congregation were concerned about me closing doors with 
traditional interfaith partners and sidelining Jewish organizations like the ADL. Sometimes doors need to be closed, but we're not locking them forever until they fix their homes until certain American church denominations can remove all of the Israel hate, they can stop engaging with BDS and show up for us when we don't need to ask. Then we can have their assurances that we can partner with them. And as I said to these few congregants, even as I close these doors temporarily, we are not alone. We have doors that are open. For our interfaith partners and friends, I'm proud to say that Temple Emmanuel has a great friend in the U.S. Israel Education Association, led by Heather Johnson in Birmingham and also Jahan Burns, who's been part of the Federation. It's organizations like this that we can count on. The work they've been doing in Congress and in Israel has been amazing. And when things happen to the Jewish people, they show up for us when we don't need to ask. And another great partner for us is KUFI, Christians United for Friends of Israel, another incredible organization that supports us. And just like our traditional interfaith partners, they have different religious beliefs. They don't proselytize and respect Jews as the core. But they're here for us. And these are the doors that we need to take. I want our congregation to engage with new and cutting edge Jewish organizations that stick to the mission. Stand with us. An unbelievable Jewish nonprofit, they are on the ground fighting against BDS and on a student, whether in college, in high school, faces any form of Jewish hate. Another organization that we will partner with called Combat Anti-Semitism. Another nonprofit, End Jew Hatred, which is a civil rights movement that focuses solely on justice for the Jewish people. And finally, a critical organization that's in our corner, the Canary Mission. It's this organization which is a database. They find and document in social media, on the internet, in speeches, any promotion of Jewish hatred, any individual or organization that engages in hate against us, whether from the far right or from the far left. So here are my last two questions. I can tell you what doesn't keep me up at night and that is being afraid of speaking out against the ADL or offering this congregation new partners for us during times of need. People were concerned that if I talked about these topics that there would be some type of backlash. For those who know me, I'm not afraid. So what keeps me up? Health family, and the Jewish community, you, and Israel. As long as you have me as your rabbi, this will be the new direction the Temple Emmanuel needs to go in for the future. A parasha for this week, Truma, speaks of a sanctuary, a sanctuary that will home God's presence. And this sanctuary was destroyed 2,000 years ago because Jews couldn't get along. It's time to rewrite the pages of our history. It's time to recognize when things are broken and things need to be fixed. And it's time we have a new chapter with new partners so they can be there for us. Once again, these are my words. I own them. Shabbat Shalom.